Um, so I just wanted to welcome you here. Um, this is part of our video interview series uh, with the Democratic Party of Evanston. Um, so for those members who have, uh, who are watching this later, who have, are familiar with our process, uh, typically we would meet in the, uh, the, uni uh, the Unitarian Church and hear for, from all the candidates for one or two minutes, they get up on stage, but obviously none of that can happen now. So we're trying to, uh, we're trying to get a, a nice long half an hour, 45 minute recording with everybody um, to introduce you to our members and, uh, and let people cast their votes. Um, so if you're not a member yet, you can sign up on our website. Um, you can either uh, join us as a dues paying member or you can join us um, if you'd prefer to volunteer at a couple of our events and we have a, um, a voter registration drive coming up that'd be perfect uh, if people are looking to get their, their membership through volunteerism. Um, so my name is Greg Andrus. I'm the vice president of the board of the Democratic Party of Evanston. And I'm here with Diane Goldring, who is running for uh, fourth ward alderman. Uh, so why don't you uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Take a minute or two and introduce yourself. Okay, I'm Diane Goldring, as you just said. I'm fourth ward. Um, I'm running for the fourth ward. Um, wow, that all of a sudden I see myself very big. Uh, <laughs> a little disconcerting. Um, I am running because I believe there is a lot of opportunity in Evanston to lead on very important issues that are facing the country right now, um, such as economic and social justice, racial justice, climate change, um, government transparency and accountability. Um, so those are all issues that I feel like we can lead on. Um, I terms of myself personally. I'm an Evanston native. I grew up here and I went to Oakton Institute and UCHS. Um, single mom with one teenage son. Um, there, that's, a, that's, that's, uh, that's all important things for you to know. Okay. So, thank you. So let me, um, uh, let me get into the first question here. Um, how well do you feel that the city of Evanston has upheld its goal of assessing decisions and policies through a lens of equity? You know, equity lens is a phrase that has been used a, a lot. Um, I think that people, uh, I actually had this conversation today with somebody who's on the uh, Equity and Empowerment Commission just trying to figure out what that exactly means to different people. Um, I think that we could do a lot better. I think there's certain decisions that we have made um, that have not, that have harmed equity. For example, um, a big one is in right here in my ward, I think uh, putting us into debt, uh, significant debt after building an extravagant Robert Crown um, has it was not advancing the cause of equity. Um, as a result, part partly as a result of that, we had to raise. You know, we're stuck with this debt for the next however many forty some years, and um, we had to raise property taxes this year. I mean, obviously nobody could see COVID coming, but we didn't have we don't have a rainy day fund, so. Anytime we have to raise property taxes um, or taxes of any sort, um, it's regressive. It's not advancing the cost of equity at all. And um, Robert Crown, we needed a new Robert Crown, um, but one that is an extravagant as this one is. You know, hockey is not a sport, or ice skating is not a sport that is um, you know popular across all of Evanston. So, I mean, now it's here, we have to look at it to see what we can do with it and make it more equitable. But that was, uh, that was one example. Okay. Um, I, sorry, I hear a little, bit, a little bit of echo there. So I'll try to, um, so how do, how would you go about listening to and weighing uh, conflicting calls from constituents who want opposing things? And this question came to us specifically on the subject of who want um, less of a conventional police presence and those who want more? Um, that is, you know, that is the job of any public, you know, public elected official. There's, especially here in Evanston, you know, and on any given issue, there are many, many um, conflicting uh, 
viewpoints on it. Um, and I think that I need to just assess them and make what I feel is the best decision looking, you know, for an, and an equity lens, you know, is one of the ways I would look at it. Um, and there's, you have to realize that there's always going to be people who disagree with any given decision. And that's, that's part of the, the job. Um, but as long as I have kept people informed about how I go about making a decision and explain my reasoning, um, I think that that will, you know, even though they won't maybe not agree with me, they'll at least respect my decision. I feel right now we don't get that. Um, we don't get a good sense of how decisions are made at, in, at, the, at the council level. We don't, especially, you know, in this ward, we don't get any kind of feedback as to how things are made. Sometimes decisions are made and, you know, we just have no idea that that was even something that was being considered. Okay. Um, um, uh, police. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Okay. Can you say that again? You cut out just a little bit. Sorry, I heard some echo there too. Um, so while we're on the subject of policing, um, the next few questions are, are on that are on that topic. Um, do you feel that the city has done enough to assure Black constituents that they are not being unfairly policed and that individual officers are being held accountable? Uh, I don't. I've heard. Um, you know, the statistics, um, the uh, Citizens Network for Protection has put out statistics about the number of traffic stops, for example, um, that our black residents, our black and brown residents are much more likely, I think the statistic was nine times more likely to be pulled over um, by police officers. So, um, and I've heard from, you know, friends and people I know that, you know, they, it's not different here than in many other places where you would think it would, you would hope it would be different, but it is, it is not. Um, and I've been watching and listening to the Health and Human Services Committee meetings and when they go through the police, you know, the reports at the end, it's, the, it's rare that um, any individual police officer is held accountable in a, in a complaint situation or that they're, they're, they're usually exonerated or found not, uh, you know, the complaint was not um, substantiated. Okay. Um, so, uh, especially those made of the Evanston Police Department um, have become something of a contentious issue recently. Uh, what do you believe the city council can do to promote transparency and accountability on this issue? Well, I think FOIA responsibility needs to return to the city clerk. Um, so following responsibility, you know, it's, you can't um, have people who are being FOIA be responsible for releasing their own information. So that is one big step that can be taken. It's how it was. Okay. Um, well, there have been some critics of the current system for investigating police misconduct. Uh, you mentioned the, the CMP earlier. Um, uh, do you believe that Evanston should have an independent oversight board uh, to the police department? Or absolutely, absolutely believe that. Absolutely believe that. And right now, you know, the 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 mayor appoints uh, the citizens. The I, I can't remember the name of the board right now, but right now uh, there's the mayor is responsible for appointing, um, and it should be. I mean, it's an important enough job that it should be. Uh, an independent board, independent of the mayor and uh, the council. Thank you. Um, so the final question on policing. Uh, recently, the city of Evanston made use of the Northern Illinois Police Alarm System uh, to respond to protests over at the university. Um, do you believe that the level of oversight the city has over NEPA's actions is sufficient? And what would you do to make this relationship more transparent and accessible to Evanston residents? Yeah, I've been having uh, quite a few discussions about that lately. Um, I think that uh, the police need to have some option for um, backup if necessary. 
I, you know, I think of a situation like um, Charlottesville, for example, where, you know, I could see Evanston becoming a target like Charlottesville for, um, you know, white supremacist organization or some such other organization and it becoming a problem. So I think that the police need to have an option for, for backup in a situation like that. Um, whether it's NIPAS, NIPAS, I, I'm not sure how to, how people pronounce it. I've heard it both ways. Um, the only way that, you know, they're, to me, it seems like they are a sort of more akin to a security, a private security company. And if there is a way to make them, you know, more accountable, to, you know, they should be accountable to Evanston residents when they are in Evanston, when they are doing the work of Evanston police. Um, how to make that happen? Um, that's something I haven't figured, I haven't spoken with the chief. I, I, it's a, it's again, it's a really important topic and I don't wanna throw out solutions that won't work without um, having further conversations about it. Um, I have had a bunch of them, but I don't have the exact solution right now. I don't, I don't know that anybody on city council has it right now. I watched the whole conversation about it last night um, on the Health and Human Services Committee meeting. And there was a level of dissatisfaction satisfaction about the performance of NEPAS, but I didn't hear any real suggestions. <clears throat> nobody was, nobody suggested banning them from coming, um, but nobody had any solutions yet as to how to make them more accountable to, um, to us, to the Evanston residents. All right. Um, so the next few questions are a little bit more of a, a bigger picture. Um, is there anything about the culture of our city government that you would like to see changed? Um, I would like to see more conversation, a way for there to be more conversation and input from residents. Um, watching the council meetings, it feels like the public comment, um, you know, the public, there's public comment and then it ends and the meeting just goes on as if public comment never happened. So um, I don't think it can be at council meetings necessarily because there are certain rules as to how the meetings are conducted, but I would like to see more um, town halls for example, um, or also, you know, it, it, in my ward, I plan to hold ward meetings on a monthly basis, <laughs> have scheduled, you know, every, the first Tuesday of every month or what have you as a, as a scheduled ward meeting. So um, I'd like to, I'd like the council to remember that we are representatives of the people. Um, that that's our primary job. <clears throat> and <clears throat> even though we may not, you know, if we don't know, we may not know always what the best answer is to any given problem. And in those situations, we need to listen to what our constituents have to say. Um, and I'd like to see a lot more of that, a lot more dialogue and a lot more listening. Thank you. Um, can you comment on the benefits and or challenges of Evanston's home rule status? How do you feel about the current council manager form of government? Yeah, that's something else I've been reading about and it seems like the, 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 count, the places that have council manager form of government want to become represent in you know, a more strong mayor form of government and then the strong mayor sees the benefits of the city manager. Um, I think that the council manager form of government can work uh, with um, more input into the city manager hiring process, for one. Um, 
you know, there's but there's pluses and minuses to both types of government. There's the you know strong mayor is accountable to the people that elected uh, them, uh, and the city manager is accountable to the you know there, it's one step removed. But at the same time, with a city manager, there's continuity amongst you know from one government to the next, and supposedly uh, makes decisions that are <clears throat> best fiscally responsible decisions not beholden to any one particular mayor you know supposedly doing you know things for non-political purposes doesn't always uh work that way so um there are you know i would like to see more accountability you know from a city manager um but that would only happen if uh you know citizens had a better, more input into the hiring process like they were supposed to. Okay, um, so the next question is about the, uh, the Climate Action Resilience Plan. Um, so Evanston has a goal of carbon neutrality by 2050. Um, what do you feel are the biggest challenges we face in reaching that goal? Uh, do you feel that the current goal is good enough or would you like to see changes made? Um, Challenges, uh, challenges on climate action. Climate climate action is challenging, very challenging across the board because every individual, no no one individual has any has a whole big impact on <laughs> on the climate. So, and it's always easy, you know, to think in the short term versus the long term. So. Uh, one ch a big challenge is changing individual behavior. So I don't think that, I think that the way to go is to look, you know, at, at the bigger hit and like, um, you know, you look at the, all the buildings, for example, and, and their um, output, their energy output. Um, I think that um, the other, you know, looking at policy decisions through a CARP lens equally to an to an equity lens is is equally as important. And um, there is a perception that um, sometimes those goals are in conflict. They they can seem like they're in conflict. You know, the goal of you know because changing you know regulating um regulation can possibly be expensive like you you know put in higher standards for efficiency and that makes buildings um more expensive to run thereby you know increasing rent so we need to find ways to you know subsidize some of the that um some of those actions, some of the climate actions. So, um, it also takes a lot of time and expertise um, and making, you know, CARP one of our top priorities. You know, we need to do, we need to do it, you know, and it's something that people don't see on an everyday basis and, um, Again, it, the the challenge is thinking longer term versus shorter term. I, I think I think that the the action the climate action plan we have is is ambitious is ambitious enough. Honestly, I think it's going to be a challenge to get to to even that. All right. Um, so the next couple of questions um, are a little more on the on the budget side. Um, First, so overall, uh, do you feel that expenditures made by the city of Evanston over the last four years have appropriately reflected the priorities, needs, and interests of Evanston residents? You know, as, as we talked a little bit earlier, we are, you know, police heavy. Um, I would like to see some shifting of priorities from policing to a more expanded concept of public safety. So um, I'm fully in support of the uh, 
recent, you know, the pilot program. I would like to see the pilot program that we are modeling after Hoots, um, the alternatives to 911. I'd like to see more of that over time. I mean, you know, right now we're in a really tough spot, obviously, because of COVID, all of our, our revenues have uh, fallen dramatically. Um, but over, you know, over the last few years, I would like to see more, you know, shifting out of policing and into more into health and human services and social services, mental health, community and economic development. I think Evanston says that that's our priority. And I would like to see us, you know, sort of put our money where our mouth is. Okay. Um, so uh, I guess on the subject of, of revenues, uh, even before the pandemic, um, it seemed as though downtown Evanston was full of empty storefronts. Uh, what do you believe can be done to promote development in a way that prioritizes small businesses and local ownership? This, you know, the storefronts um, need to have customers. <laughs> you know, that we need to have, we need to be able to support our residents so that they can um, shop in the stores. Uh, so that is, that's one thing, make, making sure that Evanston is affordable enough for um, people to be able to live here and have some money to spend going into local stores. And there's some, you know, there's, there are um, some active associations uh, like the main Dempster Mile, for example. And if we support those associations that can support the small businesses, I think that that is um, that is one method. Uh, they're very vibrant. They have, those associations have good ideas. They have done um, quite a bit of supporting, especially now during this time in providing information and making sure that those small businesses have access to capital. Um, and have all the information they need about COVID and um, have, you know, making sure that they can, at least right now, um, sell their merchandise online, things along that, things of that nature. I mean, it's a, it's a national problem, you know, the move to um, online transactions over, you know, small local businesses. Um, making sure that the that our businesses have the tools that they need again to to sell online is one thing and you know and making evanston more walkable <laughs> and that is one thing that uh you know it's been a that that is a that's a goal both for carp and for you know economic development is to make it easier to get places you know having like smaller like like for example on main street we have you know a few shops on main street and make main street just you know the the, the idea is to make each one of the little areas um, its own sort of hub you know instead of one big big downtown, you know, have smaller hubs that are walkable and, and, you know, bringing more, making sure it's affordable and bringing more families in. I'm, I'm not against trying to expand Evanston. Um, so that segues pretty well right into my next, uh, the next question I have for you. Um, despite the number of new residential units constructed in Evanston over the last few years, uh, especially some of these high rise developments, um, housing and costs in Evanston continue to rise. Do you feel the inclusionary housing ordinance is doing enough to combat this? What solutions would you like to see implemented? No, I mean, number one, I think we need an affordable housing plan. We don't have one right now. So we don't even have, we don't have a target as to the number of units that we want to see built. And we don't have a number, not only the number of units, but the type of units. I mean, the units that have been built over the last, I don't know, four years or so um, have been mostly small, you know, even the, one, the ones that we have. I think we had, I looked at the number recently, it's like only 39 affordable units 
and the wait list is several hundred people. And um, so clearly we aren't doing enough. Um, so having a plan with, a tar with targets is one thing um, because we are not really measuring adequately what we need. And um, the inclusionary housing ordinance I think 60% AMI is not, you know, if you meet the 60% AMI, it's not really that affordable to most, most people. Um, we, and we need to have more, you know, there needs to be a, a greater range of um, AMI targets within the inclusionary housing ordinance, in, in my opinion. I mean, 60% AMI includes both the AMI includes both homeowners and renters, and the AMI for renters is substantially lower than it is for homeowners. So it's not the best measure. I mean, you could disaggregate that and, and um, target, make different targets. Okay. Um, so the the, the next question I have for you, um, and these are going to be a little bit more generic, or not generic, broad. Um, why why aldermen? So of all the ways that you could you could step up to serve the public, um, why why run for alderman and not you know say school board or, or mayor or one of the other positions? Well, mayor doesn't vote. <laughs> um, you know, I have served the community in in many ways. Um, I've done a lot of volunteer work. Um, I've, you know, I'm on the board of Evanston Case, which is a special ed organiza organization, an advocacy organization for children with special needs. It's a mouthful. Um, currently, I've been, you know, since COVID, I've been delivering meals to seniors. Uh, or I started delivering meals to seniors um, for, for Jennifer's Edibles. Um, she had a senior meal, free senior meal program. And you know, that's all necessary and um, good work. And I feel like I've made a significant impact doing all that work. Um, but policy change is really where, where the rubber meets the road. You know, nothing's gonna change without policy. Um, and so Alderman is, I think, where I can have the biggest impact uh, in, in making those changes. All right. Um, so I, I'd like to ask the challengers, um, so you're running uh, against Don Wilson for the fourth Ward Alderman. What's mm -hmm. one decision that he's made that you do agree with? Um. <laughs> It's not fair. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I, let's see. I, uh, he was a big proponent of reducing the speed on chair on Ridge. Uh, that was something that he uh, and a lot of people are going to get mad at me, but I think that was a good a good call. Um, reducing the speed on Ridge because you know, environmentally it's good and and accident wise it's good. I haven't looked at the data. Uh, as far as if it's actually reduced accidents on Ridge, but Ridge is Ridge is an awful street. Um, you know, in terms of I, when I, when I'm talking to residents, one of the things I hear often is it's just it's so dark, <laughs> and Ridge is narrow and dark, and turning onto Ridge is a is a problem. Um, so that that was one one decision. <laughs> Thanks. I. <laughs> it, that's actually usually the one that people stumble on. Um, so uh, a question that. For good reason. <laughs> a question that specific to the fourth ward, um, although it is uh, very much an issue that was debated townwide, um, was about the Robert Crown Center, and I, I know you had uh, brought it up in one of your early answers. Um, I just wanted to, to get your thoughts on it um, you know, fully, since it is going to be, um, you know, it is in the ward that you're running for. Yeah, um, 
Again, yeah, I, I talked about it a little bit earlier that I do believe we needed a new community center that Robert Crown, I skated there, you know, the old one, I skated there when I was in seventh grade. So we go in there now and it, and, or went in there before it was demolished and it's still, you know, that stale ice smell is still there. So yes, I do think it was a good, a good decision, but um, overall it, it, you know, I don't really know why we need a center that has two NHL ranks and nine locker rooms and, you know, it's got some good features. There's, you know, gyms and things that people, you know, basketball court that, that people can use. And, you know, it, it, the fourth ward, one of the assets of the fourth ward is it is in the center of the city. Um, it really feels like it's the middle. So I understand that, but um, as far as it's just, it's, it's too much. It was too expensive. It's like getting a Ferrari when you need a Ford, you know? So um, I think it's, it was just, it's too much and it, and it is, and it indebted us for a, a long time and it has um, tied our hands in, in ways that we couldn't, you know, we couldn't necessarily have predicted, but um, you know, it, here we are having to raise property taxes. Um, so we just have a final question. Um, for uh, the upcoming term, um, should you be elected, what would your, your number one priority be? What is your, what is your day one goal? When I, when I talk to the people in my ward and around the city, I, the number one issue people talk about is affordable housing. That's, no, that's one or two on everybody's radar. So, find you know make, setting setting the process in motion for an affordable housing plan um, re looking at our inclusionary housing ordinance that's i mean we're in a housing even more than it was before covid we're in we're in crisis mode now you know um, supporting renters is you know even you, you can't, you know, we, pe people are in crisis at the moment. So making sure people um, can stay in their homes now with COVID, that is, that's a huge goal. Um, it's necessary. Stave off evictions um, currently. And then looking to the future, making sure, you know, we've lost a huge amount of economic and racial diversity in the city. You know, I, I grew up here and as I've said before, I have no illusions of that it was, you know, great for everybody back when I was growing up, but, um, you know, data show that we have lost, we have lost a good chunk of our black and brown population and not just them. I mean, it's not, it's economic diversity, middle class, you know, we don't seem to have a broad range of um, income levels here anymore. And I just, you know, Evanston's special in many ways. And I, and I don't want to live in just any other, you know, North Shore suburb. I'm here for a reason. And I think most of us are here for a reason. Most of Evanston residents are here for a reason. Well, thank you very much. Um, so we're, we've got our, our half an hour here. Um, if you'd like, I see there's some people um, that have joined us to, to tune in. Um, I forcing me to put my reading glasses back on. Well, I can, see. Um, I can open up the, uh, I can open up the chat and uh, if, you, if you'd be willing, you'd take a couple of questions. Okay, so for the, uh, for the people uh, listening in right now, I'm going to allow you to unmute yourselves. Um, all I ask is that you try not to talk over each other um, for one question at a time. So um, let's see if there are any questions. Sometimes there aren't. I don't know if I see everybody, how many people there are. It's like a couple of names I recognize, but um, all right, doesn't look, like, uh, doesn't look like we've got any questions from the audience this time. Um, so I just wanted to thank you very much for, for joining. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, 
Uh, I'll just remind people that um, the endorsement event is going to be uh, the week of the, from the 17th to the 23rd. Um, ballots are going to go out to our, to our members. Um, and again, if you're not a member yet, you can sign up on our website, either as a dues paying member or as a membership through, or you can get a membership through volunteerism um, by signing up to volunteer at a couple of our, of a couple of our events. Um, so thank you all very much for, for uh, tuning in and thank you, Diane, for joining me. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. All right. Have a great day. All right. You too. All right. Bye-bye.